Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Well, it's time for more goings on in the amplifier adventure. Now, I know some of you are asking me, why do I call this an adventure? The thing is, I call this an adventure because not even I know what's going to happen, and that's pretty much what is going on. As you may have seen from my previous videos, I've got the amplifier itself built, and that seems to work pretty good. Also, I was going through my junk box, and I found this nice transformer. This is the one I was using previously. I got a 24 volt center tapped out of that. You know, that's that's 12. Sorry, that's two 12 volts in a neutral. With this one, I'm just going to turn it around. Okay, make sure I don't shock myself on it. With this one, I've got two 19 volt secondaries on it, so I've connected them in parallel. So I've now got a center tapped transformer that gives me about 40 volts. I'm not even going to touch those, because I don't know if you can shock yourself on 40 volts, but I'm not even going to go there and try. Also, I've made a rectifier from these four diodes, and I've had to change the main filter caps for these ones, because those other filter capacitors were only rated for 25 volts, and with this transformer they're going to have about 30 volts going through them, so so obviously I had to do something about that. I've also added these two fuse holders, and they've got two amp fuses in them. So that's the amplifier power supply pretty much done. Now all I've got to do is make a power supply for the tone control and the uh, phono preamp that I'm going to put in. And we'll see where we go from there. Speaking of tone controls, I have made, well, completed the tone control. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. I'm just going to plug it into my homemade power supply and show you what happens. Okay, that's now plugged into the homemade power supply and I'm going to turn it on and listen to what I get. As you can hear, I'm getting hot. Oh, hang on. I'm getting the tape recorder sound coming through the speakers. I'll just turn that off. Anyway, as you can hear, I'm getting a whole lot of buzzing. I'm just going to take this thing apart. Can't touch this thing anywhere without it even buzzing even more. I don't know what's going on there with the speaker. Why it's doing that? Hmm, uh, something very strange going on here. I'm trying to open this tone control to show you what's inside. And when I'm doing it, this speaker goes like absolutely crazy. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. But anyway, I'll, I'll just pause everything and open the tone control and then show you. As you can see, it's absolutely packed with stuff. I've got the main buffer and output preamp here. Just get out, get that out of the way so you can see the controls themselves. For the actual tone control itself, I've used a filter circuit that I built back in the Amplifier Adventure 2. And I thought that would be a better option since the other filter circuit I've made, I've had to use separate potentiometers for both the left and the right. And with this one, they're all on the same thing. You know, both channels are on the same potentiometer. Although I do still have separate volume controls, step, separate left and right volume controls. And as you probably hear, this thing isn't really working very good. It buzzes like mad. I could sort that problem out by putting tin foil around it and grounding it, but that's not really, that's just not going to... That's not really worth it, because this thing has got other problems as well. If I turn the bass up, I can't really see what I'm doing. This is the bass control here. If I turn that up, I only get more bass out of one speaker. The treble control seems to be overly sensitive. And when you turn the controls down, there really isn't that much reduction. I do know why it does buzz. Now, I'm just trying to get to the... I'm just trying to get to everything so I can plug it in again. I'm going to plug the amplifier in again. Now, this is the naughty way of doing it. Don't try this at home, you might blow up the house. I'm a trained professional, I know what I'm doing. Seriously though, if you don't know what you're doing, don't do that. Right, I'm going to 
turn the thing on again. Now as you can probably hear it's buzzing again. I know what the cause of the buzz is. If I turn the lights out, as you can hear, the buzzing has completely stopped. When I turn the lights on again, as you can hear, the buzzing comes back. So, in the way of tone controls, I'm not having much luck. These controls don't really react the way I want them to. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take my original tone control circuit that I made earlier in this series. As you can see, I've put it on this board here and put the provisions for the volume controls. And I'm going to wire this all up and just say, oh the heck with it, I'll use this one. And that should be that. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to have to resort to using a chip. I don't want to use an integrated circuit. I'd rather have this all done with transistors, but if the worst comes to the worst, that's what I'm going to do. Right, well, let's see how the progress has gone. As you can see, I've put the volume controls in there now. And here's the little circuit board for the uh, preamp and buffer. And it seems to work a lot better. Now I'm going to play a tape, show that it's working good. Anybody who's played the Arcade Outrun will probably recognise this. Again, can't turn it up too much because it's quite late, don't want to bother anyone. Treble controls work. Bass controls work. Now I'm just going to turn the tape record um tape player down because I'm going to show another little feature that I've added. Now this switch here, I can increase the gain of this preamp. That's why I've turned the thing down because it does go quite loud with this switched on. As you can hear, it's much more sensitive. Unfortunately, there is a little problem with it like this. I'm getting some buzz, but what I'm probably do is get get a piece of card for um piece a piece of cardboard, put some tin foil around it, and then put it up to, up against that thing. That should stop the buzz. Obviously, insulate it so nothing shorts out. But at least that buzzing is nowhere near as bad as it was with the other thing. One thing that I am going to have to work on with this um, gain control switch is that when I switch it. As you can hear, it sends quite a last, nasty loud noise into the speakers. In fact, if I put the camera onto the speaker, you can see it sends quite a nasty pulse into the speaker. And I measured that with the meter, and that's about, that's almost 12 volts going in there, definitely enough to damage a small speaker. Fortunately, I've got speakers connected up that can take that. So that's another thing I'm going to have to work on. But the good thing is, there's absolutely no buzzing when it's on the low setting. Absolutely no buzzing whatsoever. But when I put it on here, there is a little bit of buzzing, but it's nowhere near as bad as it was. So things are looking up. All I've got to do now is make the switching circuit for all the different functions. This is how I'm planning to have everything wired up. I've got three inputs here. And there's a switch which is a rotary selector switch. Got two tape decks here. There's the amplifier and the speaker. This is just one channel of it, obviously. Made a little mistake there. So there you go. You can pretty much see how it's all going to be wired up now. Going to be able to do tape dubbing and things like that. Well, that's all going to be done in another video because I'm just running, I'm just about out of time right now. So I guess that's it for now. So until next time, goodbye. All right, let's get this edited. Well, that's just about it for this episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Remember, if you like these videos, click on me right now to go to my channel. Or, if you want to see the previous episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop, click on the box on the right. 
And that's it. I'll see you next time. So until next time, goodbye.